Sometimes entire genres of games spring forward from a single one. Like the Doom clone really is what jumpstarted FPSs. And then sometimes they're bad. Hi folks, it's Falcon and today on Game Ranks 10 copycat games that suck. Starting off with number 10, it's Final Sword, which obviously copied The Legend of Zelda. Now, the game got into trouble for blatantly stealing Zelda's lullaby, and it was taken down for a while at least, but it's back as Final Sword Definitive Edition. So yeah, we were thankfully able to purchase the game. It's still terrible too. While it actually stole music from Zelda, its inspirations are kind of all over the place. Obviously Zelda's the biggest. Like doesn't running around the barren flat landscape remind you of Hyrule Field? Well, maybe if you squint really hard. That's the big thing. This game is ugly as hell. Like it looks very bad. It has student project level menus, and UI elements, some of the most basic environments we've ever seen. And it's not like this thing came out like 20 20 years ago. It came out in 2019. So the graphics are really bad, but the gameplay is worse. You start off buying a dinky sword from the town. You're instructed to go check out this spring. So you follow the waypoint and there's a troll boss and it takes way too many hits. So you're probably thinking this is supposed to be an unwinnable fight, right? So then you die and nothing happens. The game just makes you reload a save and you realize that you have to grind so much because you have to grind to do like a troll boss at the start of the game. That's the majority of the gameplay. It's grinding and like getting cash and experience off endlessly respawning enemies. It's super boring. It's super repetitive and you don't restore health naturally. So if you take too much damage without getting enough money, you can undermine the whole project. So it's this game with ugly graphics, torturous gameplay, and also it stole one of the most recognizable music tracks of all time. It's bad is, is what we're saying here. At number 9 is Haze, which ripped off Halo really bad. During the Xbox and Xbox 360 era, it seemed everybody wanted to make the Halo Killer, the game that would knock Bungie's Halo franchise down a peg. Looking back in hindsight, pretty much every one of these Halo Killers failed miserably in the stated goal, and while Haze might not be the absolute worst of them, it's the highest profile. Sony hyped this one to the moon, but this game wasn't killing anything except for Free Radical, the studio that made it. The basic concept here isn't bad, but the execution, it is. Uh, the whole thing revolves around this drug you can take called Nectar, which basically makes you see the world in a more video gamey way. But when you're off it, the world becomes more realistic. Just ignoring how this whole concept falls apart almost instantly because the subpar visuals and silly story, the basic game doesn't actually feel good to play. It has really standard FPS controls, two weapon limit, regenerating health, has some very Halo controlling style vehicles, but it never feels good to play. Even when you're all juiced up on nectar or whatever, the world's still pretty bland to look at and the enemies get lost in the ugly environments pretty easily. It's probably the best game on this list though, which is, I mean, if that's an indication where we're going, buckle in. At number eight is Rogue Warrior, uh, a ripoff of Call of Duty. Probably one you've heard about already. Rogue Warrior is impressive how bad it is, even compared to the many, many Call of Duty knockoffs that somehow continue to come out. But what's bizarre about this one is that it actually had a real publisher in Bethesda. Like, actually. The guy you play as, Dick Marcinko, is voiced by Mickey Rourke, of all people. And the game came out only like a year after The Wrestler got him a nomination for Best Act at the Oscars, uh, but this game did not get him um, even a fraction of that acclaim. It's a bog standard military shooter with some of the most brain dead gameplay you've seen. For a huge chunk of the first level, every enemy you see has their back turned to you, you can just stomp up to them and do an instant kill. Once the actual shooting starts, it doesn't get a lot better either. The guns feel weak and crabby to fire, the environments are about as bare bones as you can get. And the cover system is a mess that they ripped off from Rainbow Six Vegas and did much, much worse. It's one of those games that's terrible, but it's still kind of funny. The main character's constant swearing is as ridiculous as it is hilarious. And the introductory mission where they introduce the two guys coming with you on the mission only to blow them up unceremoniously like a minute later. It's like, show this chef's kiss emoji. It's that. For just five bucks, there's some, some laughs to be had with this game. It is not good, but it is, it is pretty funny.
And number seven is Bounty Battle, a ripoff of Smash Brothers, which is basically, you know, a genre unto itself. The appeal of the games is obvious. It's basically an entire game series about smashing all your toys together. But what most of the copycats forget is that there's a lot of depth to these games that might not be super obvious at first glance. Smash Brothers games look pretty basic, but there's actually a lot of thought put into them that makes them as fun to play as they are. Pretty much every game that's tried to ape the style of Smash Brothers hasn't been as good. I mean, there's some good ones out there, but there's never one that has actually took it on at the same level. That said, the worst of them all is Bounty Battle. What sucks about this one is that, at least to me, the concept is great. Instead of getting a bunch of famous Nintendo and Nintendo adjacent game heroes together to fight, the developers picked a more attainable goal. Let's get a bunch of indie game characters instead. And there's a great roster. Owlboy, the robot from SteamWorld Dig, a guy from Darkest Dungeon, Dead Cells, Axiom Purge. There's some good characters in this. None of the really heavy hitters like Shantae or Shovel Knight or anything, but some good ones like the Conehead guy from Blast Summit. There are a lot of total nobodies here too though, including five original characters made just for this game for some reason. One of them's just a beholder like from Dungeons and Dragons. So I, I mean the roster isn't 100% great, but that's not the problem. The problem is the gameplay. It just feels like crap. Every stage is boring and flat. Character animations are janky, awkward. Everything's difficult to understand what's going on, what anyone's doing, and most of the characters kind of just feel identical. They look different, but they don't feel different. On top of that, the game's weirdly, like, silent. There is background music that's not bad, but there's not a lot of sounds. Uh, there's so much wrong with it as a fighting game. We could probably go on forever, but, I mean, take our word on it. Bounty Battle makes PlayStation All-Stars look like a masterpiece. At number six is Rough Trigger, the Vanacore Conspiracy. Like, just look at it. It's it's Ratchet and Clank, straight up. About as shameless as it gets. You're a little furry dude in a spacesuit with a gun. You ever seen those, like, knockoff Pixar movies like Ratatouille or whatever? Like, that's basically what this is. Even the boxes you break look the same as the boxes from Ratchet and Clank. Some, even with ammo crate. Like, there's not a lot. Let's look at it. There's not a lot to say here. Look at it. It's just an inferior knockoff to a popular franchise. And this game came out in 2006. So, like, the first four Ratchet and Clank games had already come out. At least most knockoffs strike when the iron is hot. They didn't. Honestly, it's not as absolutely terrible compared to some of the blatant asset flips we've seen people try to pass off as games. But it is about as bland and forgettable as it gets. There's a reason that nobody remembers it. And number five is Made Man Confessions of the Family Blood, which is a ripoff of Max Payne. Like, uh, look at it. it. But before we even get into that, the name. That is one of the most ridiculous subtitles of all time. Up there with stuff like Breaking 2 Electric Boogaloo. The game itself is as generic and forgettable as it gets, so I guess the subtitle worked. The title's memorable, at least. In the mid-2000s, there were so many crime games with the protagonist with bullet time powers, though. And none of them could match up to the originator, Remedies Max Payne. This this one's probably the worst. Ugly as hell graphics, ridiculous voice acting, and very basic gameplay are pretty much the hallmarks of made man compassions of the family blood. God, I hate saying that. It's a, not a good title. The slowdown mechanics feel really pointless and tacked on. Like they felt like they had to put them in because they don't add anything to the game. It is an all around bad game. Nothing interesting going on here. If it didn't have such a funny name, it probably wouldn't even have much to talk about here. It's just bottom of the barrel bad. At number four is Resno Racer, which is ripping the Mario Kart off. First things first, this is so bad, we have got to talk about the icon. The icon is Nightmare Fuel. Look at those dead sunken eyes. Is this like a Five Nights at Freddy's fan game that no one talks about? Well, no, it's uh, just a terrible game. Resno Racer does not hide what it is ripping off. Look at the startup menu, look at the racer selection. It's directly copied from Mario Kart 8. But that's the only hint of quality you see from this game. Aside from from some ripped off UI elements, everything is very bad. The opening cutscene says it all. Terrible models, haphazard garbage tracks, weird stuttering every time the camera cuts, terrible animation that doesn't even try to make these things are, are, are riding vehicles. I, I don't know. It's all there. It plays as bad as it looks too. Whether you've got a character with terrible handling or max handling, trying to turn just feels so sluggish and awkward. It doesn't even matter. Power-ups are bad. Tracks are completely uninspired. 
including this one that's just a straight ripoff of Rainbow Road. It all just sucks. There's no sense of speed. Ever really starts very slowly and painfully speeds up over a period of time that feels like forever. Like to the point where I thought the game might be screwed up. Nope, that's just how it works. We could probably pop off forever about it though, so let's just stop there. You're seeing it right. Like I don't have to say more, you can tell, right? And number three is Unearthed, the Trail of Ivan Batuta, which is about as blatant as it gets. It's, it's Uncharted. You play a guy with a knit shirt who solves puzzles in ancient tombs and makes wisecracks during shootouts. It's almost admirable how ambitious it is, being a super small team trying to emulate the work of one of the biggest game studios out there. But yeah, it's not its not a win, let's say. Uh, the shooting does not feel good at all. The cover system is awkward. Shooting is weirdly stiff. Enemy is just in one spot waiting for you to shoot at them which is of course not an immersive experience whole opening is basically a riff on uncharted you flash forward to the main guy in danger basically the same same exact setup as uncharted 2 but way lower in budget and this is kind of a nitpick but the grenade sound is almost exactly the same as in uncharted <laughs> It's also got like really awkward stealth. Uh, it has really crappy enemy placement that hides them so you get shot. The enemies are dumb as hell though during the randomly popping up stealth sections. And the platforming, well, surprise, it's exactly like how Uncharted does it, but not as good. There's even like an Uncharted style vehicle section, but uh, not quite as impressive as in those games. Some of these runes look all right, and the animation's slightly better than expected for a $5 game but come on guys they even have a joke character that makes a reference to uncharted and tomb raider like yeah you totally did rip those games off just because you say it doesn't make it less of that though and number two is Gene Rain, which is, I mean, an interesting ripoff on Gears of War. Most of the games on this list are just trash top to bottom, but this one, it's its something special. There's few games out there we'd consider so bad it's good, but this game is that, if you're in the right mindset. Two big reasons why. It's really ambitious. It has this bizarre, complicated story that spans multiple generations, and that's only because I think so. Like, the translation is so bad. You combine this really overly ambitious storytelling with a barely coherent script, and it leads to some pretty funny moments, like this part where the tutorial warns you, don't let the zombies get close to you or they will get mad. Outside of the bonkers story, the actual gameplay is just pure Gears of War. Ammo boxes are pretty much identical to the ones in Gears. Pretty much everything else you do is the same, too. There's waist-high cover all over the place. I mean, you play as these big, meaty space marines and sometimes there's robots and also zombies for some reason and while it's funny to watch playing it is bad um the controls are floaty and stiff at the same time makes it really hard to hit anything animations are super jerky and it takes forever for your health to recharge if you're into so bad it's good games this might be worth checking out on youtube or something but i don't know about actually playing it it is not fun and finally, at number one, it's Barbarian Souls. It does not do a good job cleverly hiding the fact that its inspiration is Dark Souls. And in all actuality, it's probably the absolute worst of the worst. There's so many Souls-like games out there on Steam to choose from. They all vary wildly in quality, but this one, it is, it, it is bad. Like, just look at the trailer they have for the game here. The frame rate's choppy, it's blurry as hell, and this is what they chose to advertise the game with, so it's gonna be rough. Starting up, interface is, I mean, it's a rudimentary version of the Dark Souls interface. You get sword, potion, health, stamina up top. Stamina goes down when you swing your sword, but it doesn't actually do anything. Like, you can keep swinging forever. This stamina bar just refills instantly after it runs out. So the game drops you into the first level with no story whatsoever. You just run through these unity asset flip looking levels, beat up some pathetic barbarian dudes, barely put up a fight. I, I thought at first these fat barbarian guys were the only enemies, but the second level, yeah, there's a guy with a spear. Ooh. The fact they try to charge 15 bucks for this game is, is criminal. It's barely an alpha. There's almost no gam to even speak of. You just wander around, kill 10 braid dead enemies who stand around each incredibly ugly level and then move on. I tapped out at level two. Argue the merits of games like Lords of the Fallen or Dark Souls 2 all you want. But remember, there are much, much worse games out there when it comes to Souls likes. This isn't even funny bad. It's just terrible. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, 
subscribe, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is a course of subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Gamer.